move your screen autumn occupying the top half there. Yeah, and uh, Canister here keeping, you know, in okay hand, but really wants to find that mountain to kind of unlock his hand. As you can see, there's a Blood Aspirant and a Careless Celebrant in hand. Really, really, really wants to find land number three here. He's got that turn two Mire Trident, which is solid, but... Mm -hmm. That'll that'll be helpful, but you're right. A mountain does need to come off the top of the library in the next few turns for Canister to really be able to go off. On the other hand, Autumn Burchett kicks things off with Metamize Prophecy, and as you can see, that was Scry 2 for the first chapter, and we're already on chapter number two for Autumn. This is... Well, it's not the most exciting chapter. It's just choose a card name. But Autumn's job here is to make sure that they name a card that they know that they're going to cast next turn and have no no problem doing so. Yeah, and so that means we see the Heliot's Pilgrim here. So Autumn is setting up for that flicker of fate and basically it has to cast it next turn to get the value off the Metamize Prophecy. Yeah, this is an interesting position because if, uh, if Canister wanted, he could kill the Heliod's Pilgrim. And that would mean that Autumn would have to use Flicker of Fate on the Meyer Triton, which benefits him a little bit. Right. You know, Canister's fine with that if that happens. Um, but he does not have, realistically, a way to completely interrupt this. And that means that Autumn's going to get the two cards off of Venomize Prophecy. And Chapter 3 is where that card lives. <laughs> yeah. You know, you're playing that real, really uh, to, to get the two extra. Oh, it looks like they're actually just going to go ahead and blink the... Uh... The prophecy the itself. The prophecy itself. Mm, that is a nice little card advantage engine here. Yeah. From, uh, from Autumn Bridge. You know, that here. might work out better in the long run with the two extra cards. It's it's a close call, I think, between the Heliot's Pilgrim, where you can get a specific card like their second copy of Staggering Insight, for example. Um, but with Dreadful Apathy in hand already, uh, I can I can see it. Yeah, definitely. Especially if Autumn's able to line up this scenario where they can get the extra two cards. I mean, you know, drawing two extra cards is one thing when you've put one card into it. If you get to do it again, you're going to be so far ahead on cards, it's going to be hard for Piotr to realistically come back. Yeah. Piotr unable to find land number four. Was nice that he was able to at least find land number three to play the Underworld Charger, and then he can also run out a couple of Scavenging Harpies. So he'll have plays, but, you know, this is kind of the, the portion of his deck that's just kind of fine. You know, he took a bunch of those filler cards earlier, and he's just kind of curving out. But, um, you know, if he really wants to kind of take over, we're going to need to see some of those heavy hitters, those rares that he first picked uh, for picks, I guess, pack one, two, and three of the draft. Choose a card name. Once again, is the choice here for Burchett. And Autumn chose Nyad of the Hidden Cove. Nyad of Hidden Coves. And uh, yeah, makes sense. Yep. Basically a guaranteed cast the next turn for looking, Autumn. Looking to slow down the aggression here. Ooh, there we go. Yeah, one with the stars on the charge. But yeah, Mountain. Mountain's big. Yeah, one with the stars is an interesting card, and it reads... Weird, right? You, yeah. You're like, what does this do? I, I had to read it three times. Also, uh, that card is in Mystery Booster Draft, if anybody's had a chance. It's called Enchantment Ties. <laughs> and it's like, they actually just made that a card, apparently. Yeah. Uh, it was one of the playtest cards in there, but it's also just a real card. Yeah, it's but it's basically just four mana destroy target creature, right? No, it, it's not. It's four mana pacifism. That's how I... Yeah, read. yeah, yeah. Because the creature still has abilities. Right, of course. Right? Like, they can still tap it do things with it. It just can't attack or block. It, at least is my shorthand for it. But Autumn is getting incredible value here off the Metamized Prophecy, drawing four cards off of it <laughs> so insane. far. I'm so jealous. Autumn's going to run out Illyrios Enraptured. Illyrios brings a uh, reflection. Yeah, that's an excellent play this turn because now Piotr can't really can't freely attack with that venomous hero fan because you know it'll trade with the three two and then Autumn will be able to untap the Illyrius itself and get a lot of value from that. So now Canister looking at options. He has drawn a second mountain, could cast two spells this turn, scavenging harpy plus a two drop or two two drops, or could just run out Scofos War Leader if he felt like he just wanted to uh 
to get big here. Yeah, I think based on the board state here, the Scofus War Leader is fine and you get to use all your mana, but I think right now it looks like going to the skies makes more sense because Autumn doesn't really have defenses set up for the, for the air. Mm. So running out, you know, a Careless Celebrate into Scavenger Carpe makes more sense given that we right. see no flyers on Autumn's side. Right, that makes sense. Uh, additional thing to keep note of here is that Canister is aware of the one copy of Staggering Inside in Hand for Burchett since Autumn searched it up earlier. And he's going to have to keep that in mind, right? Uh, you do not want to give Autumn even a window to hit you with a creature with staggering insight on it. And the Venomous Hierophant does a very good job of holding the ground game steady yeah. with Death Touch. And now, you know, Autumn's down to 13, and curious to see if Autumn is just going to fire off a dreadful apathy here, apathy here on one of the flyers. It doesn't feel great, but, you know, right now, I mean, that's, that's four in the air every single turn. It seems to me like you probably want to put this on the flyer, unless unless you want to get a little more aggressive. Okay, yeah, it looks like this is the more taking a more aggressive line here. It looks like Autumn wants to get the staggering insight rolling, right? But there's but a it just doesn't work out. Right. There's a there's a careless ce celebrant in play. Oh, okay. So oh, how about both of them? Suit them up both. And by the way, this will remind you of when Autumn won. Mythic Championship with a similar strategy, actually. Yeah. Although they didn't have access to a card like Staggering Inside at the time, they had similar. Yeah, I think Canister's okay with just giving Autumn one attack trigger off the Staggering Inside because next turn he can just play the War Leader, and that should be able to brick wall that 4 3 reflection that's in play. But I mean, this is this is the game plan for Autumn's deck, you know. Yes. Put a staggering inside onto a creature, hope it sticks, and hope it goes the distance. Yeah, one of the issues uh, for Autumn was that they didn't get quite enough evasive creatures. You, know, you, right. you and I were looking over the list. We were kind of first thing we looked for were flyers, and there's not that many. You know, you would prefer to have more than Autumn ended up with, and you see the downside of that here, as Autumn has now really found themselves in a position where the Scophos, Scophos War Leader is just a brick wall. Yeah. Now, Autumn really wants to find a way to somehow attack through the Scophos War Leader. There's a Thirst for Meaning in their hand. Oh, yeah. We'll see what, she, uh, we'll, we'll see what they find off of this Thirst for Meaning. And Piotr was also considering whether or not he wanted to attack with the Scavenging Harpies, right? But the, but the, the awkward part is, if you choose not to attack, you might not want to attack with either, so that you have the mm -hmm. double block ready to deal with that 4-3 reflection with Staggering Insight in play. Looks like Autumn did not find what they were looking for. Namely, some way to get Scofos War Leader out of the way, even temporarily, would be okay. Um, and it looks like they're just going to discard, oh, revoke existence and a land. Prioritizing keeping that other land in hand. Hmm. So, yeah, no good attack here, right? I mean, just, no, just some creatures and uh yeah they're not really going to be able to get a good attack here with that scofos war leader in play so yeah so it, it's it's yeah just running out a, a few creatures i mean transcendent envoy is isn't the worst because it does mean that autumn has at least one way to chump and trade with the scavenging harpy on board so that should slow down the clock. And as you saw there, Piotr, end of turn, sacrificing the Underworld Charger here to try to escape out the Charger and put that into play as it escapes as a 5-5. Five five. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, e even though Autumn has found a way to draw multiple extra cards, in fact, four extra cards over the course of this game, Piotr just has had better cards. And the cards have not lined up well from Autumn's perspective. Yeah, I would say, I mean, just the overall card quality in Piotr's deck is just higher, right? You know. And this is in large part due to the fact that Autumn got cut off. 
right? Autumn got completely cut off in pack two, and could add a far superior deck if Taralth chose not to make the switch into blue white in pack two. And you can see that Canister now deep in the tank on what to do here. Yeah, a couple options here. You can either run out two spells here, run the Blood Aspirin out and the Flemic Cyclops, or just escape out that Underworld Charger. Plenty of gas here, plenty of cards in the graveyard here for Underworld Charger, which means that Piotr can just attack, not really care about any double blocks because he can just recast that Charger. And, you know, that's the power of this gate mechanic, yeah. right? You know, when the games go long, when, when it kind of becomes a grind fest here where, where you're just trading resources back and forth, the person with the escape card can, can often kind of pull out ahead because, you know, they're just using their graveyard as a resource. That's just extra cards, extra spells over the course of a game. And taking a look at the way that this game's planned out here for Canister as well, Blood Aspirant can be a game changer going forward. You can pay one in a red, tap it, and sack a creature or enchantment. It does one damage to a target, which on this board isn't going to do a whole lot, but that creature can't block this turn either. And even activating that just the once, uh, maybe sacrificing the Venomous Hierophant if it doesn't get exiled, something along those lines, can be enough to push through a lethal or very awkward block situation for Burchett. In the meantime, the Underworld Charger, hey, <laughs> this is what it was built for. <laughs> it is getting in the red zone. And Canister actually playing around a potentially a, an instant speed enchantment here and choosing not to attack with Scavenging Harpy here because of the Triton Wave Rider that's in play. Mm. One unknown card, if you're sitting in Glagovsky's seat, we can see, of course, Nothing to fear there. So here comes Blood Aspirant. And uh, interestingly as well, for those of you that were with us to watch Canister draft his deck, he's drawn his Temple of Malice. And this is a perfect spot for it where he really, really doesn't want to find any more lands. And if, if he can scry one to the bottom or something, it, it can be quite useful. So Flummox Cyclops hits the battlefield, and there we go, Mountain to the bottom. And you can see the extra value that he got by using that pick. Back over to Autumn, and wow, even after having drawn the four extra cards off the double Metamized Prophecy, Autumn finds themselves in a position where they're effectively flooding. Omen of the Forge, you know, in conjunction with Blood Aspirant, that could get a blocker out of the way, even kill the Triton Wave Rider, though it would mean that the Blood Aspirant would have to uh, sacrifice something real here. Right. Perhaps itself. Uh, you know, that, that is a play that you can make if you don't see your Blood Aspirant becoming a big part of the game plan going forward. Additionally, though, Omen of the Forge can just go upstairs. Yeah, the nice thing about the Blood Aspirant, though, is because you can sacrifice enchantments, you mm -hmm. can go Omen of the Forge, sacrifice Omen of the Forge, oh, and, and just deal do three it damage and just get something off the board. So it, it, it looks like that's what that's what Glogoski is going to wow, go for this here. Is and devastating yeah. here for Autumn Burchett. Now another two for one in favor of Glagovsky. He's kind of doing it the hard way. <laughs> yeah. I think he's just going to attack with everything, yeah, right? I, I mean, he's at 18. Everything. Autumn can't really uh, completely punish uh, Canister here and, and and just really tough blocks here for uh, for Autumn. Oh, it's chump block o'clock here in Hawaii for Autumn Burchett. And uh, this one's in the books. In fact, they're just going to go ahead and pack it up. That is game number one going to Pyotr Glagovsky. Again, he was our featured drafter. We saw him draft this deck. We didn't uh, even see him play one today. of his rares. No, right? and he has three of them. If you take a look at his list, you see an Ox of Agonis over on the right in the five drop slot. And yes, that is legitimately two copies of Tectonic Giant, which is just a nightmare of a card to deal with. If it gets targeted by a spell an opponent controls, you get two great choices that will fit whatever the game plan is at the time you're doing. You can do three damage to your opponent if you're trying to race or if you're ahead on damage or, or if they're nearly dead. Or you can exile the top two cards of your library, choose one of them, and you have until next turn to play it so you can recoup some card advantage if it's gone. Yeah. It's a really powerful card. And having two of them is really rough. Like, if <laughs> it's, you know, Autumn is not flush with removal spells. Uh, you can see the dreadful apathy up at the top part of your screen there. There's some counters. Those could get the job done. Uh, but, you know, one with the stars, okay, th there's an answer. But things start to get sketchy quickly. Yeah. 
And you can see Canister boarding in a Thaumaturge is familiar there. Uh, you know, because kind of one of the ways he, I think he foresees himself potentially losing is just through flyers, mm. right? There's a couple of vexing goals in Autumn's list. So now that he's on the draw, he's not the aggressor, right? He's on the back, he's on the back foot. So better to have a 1-3 flyer on the draw than something like a scavenging harpy, which simply just trades. All right, game number two incoming. Gogovsky did win game number one. And, uh, not the quickest start here for either player. No two drops. Knight of Hidden Coves is going to kick things off as the first spell of the game here for Autumn. And unfortunately for Glagowski, that Omen of the Forge will not be an answer for it. But he's got Thaumaturge's Familiar. Ooh. And hello, friend. Wow. The first of those three red rares that Piotr opened. Yeah, and Piotr has several ways to push that giant through, too. He's got a final flare if he really needs to get a creature out of the way. He's got a final death if he draws land number five. And that Omen of the Forge in hand. Yeah, the second copy of Final Flare in hand, a little bit awkward. Yeah. Uh, but um, the Tectonic Giant on the battlefield now, with good attacks, at least as the board sits, is looking good. Though Autumn is... Uh, Big draw here from Autumn. Yeah. Staggering Insight off the top means that Autumn can slap the Staggering Insight on the Sunmane Pegasus and get a nice attack here, while also having a removal backup with that Karametra's Blessing in hand. Yeah, yeah. Th this is exactly the scenario that you and I described uh, at the onset of the match, Paul, for if you're rooting for Autumn, the thing to look for is this. It's literally exactly this. It's an evasive creature with Staggering Insight and a way to protect it, and Autumn has all three of those things. Autumn's win percentage when they play this Tegrian Insight on the Sun Main Pegasus is going to jump like 30% here. Right. And Peter has to try to get it off the board, right? Yes. So, so he simply just has no choice but to try to fire off a removal spell and kind of hope to get there. But Autumn does have the protection spell in that blessing. And it's kind of interesting because Canister has, as you can see, three different ways to deal enough damage to that Pegasus to kill it. But it is going to cost Peter dearly. The final death will get brickwalled by a Chimera's Blessing if he draws a land off the top of the library, and then he's going to have to start throwing creatures to final flares, and it's just going to cost him three cards to get that thing off the battlefield. And in the meantime, all right, cancel that order. <laughs> Autumn has actually decided to go with Nyxborn Seaguard rather than playing the Staggering Insight. You know, the general line of play in these scenarios is make hay while the sun is shining. If you see a window where you could connect with Staggering Insight, you do it. Right. It looks like Autumn is very, very concerned about that Tectonic Giant in play and does not want Piotr get, to get free attacks in with the Giant. So probably taking a turn off, get the defenses set up, and then next turn run at that Staggering yeah. Insight. Yeah. See, I, I think that from Autumn's perspective, if it were me, I would look at it and say, how about I just assume that this Giant has, you know, gets to hit me once. Yeah. Gets a little trigger, gets to hit me. But now you, don't okay. even, now you don't even get a great attack because there's the Flummox Cyclops in play. Now, in order for Flummox Cyclops to not block, Autumn needs to attack with two creatures. Right, this is very awkward. And you don't really want to fire off a Karametra's Blessing to attack through a Cyclops. Oh, no, oh, because no, Because that leaves oh, yourself no. vulnerable. Oh, no, Paul. This is a block that says reach. The Sunmane Pegasus just attacked into the reach Flummox Cyclops, and now Autumn has to use one of the two tricks, either Threnody Singer or the Karametra's Blessing, and this is actually going to open up this Sunmane Pegasus to getting killed by a regular removal right. spell now, now. now. Now the window's open. I mean, what's Piotr going to do? Not use his removal spell to, to get that Sunmane Pegasus off the battlefield? He has no choice. And, I mean, he's already now seen the Karametra's Blessing. It's extremely unlikely that, that Autumn has another protection spell here. Yeah, the... the Th this just hasn't lined up the way that Autumn was hoping it would. Choosing to cast the Nyxborn Seaguard kind of forced this issue now, saying, all right, I, I got to get rid of this Cyclops. I'm going to use my combat trick to do so, but that's going to leave the Sunmane Pegasus vulnerable to removal spells. And when you're playing against Black, Red, they have removal uh, spells. And this is, this, this is going to be brutal because this was kind of the entire game plan here yes. for Autumn. It has really fallen apart for Autumn Burchett. Now, this, to be fair, this is a two for two. Yeah. This is both players losing two cards. But when you look at what Canister's losing, his worst creature plus a replaceable removal spell versus 
an entire game plan for Autumn Burchett. It just fell apart. Yeah, given that the Flummox Cyclops was in play, I think what you wanted to do is just run out the other flyer, right? Run out the singer, and then next turn, suit up your Pegasus and attack with both flyers, and then that shuts off the ability for Flummox Cyclops to block. That allows you to have the combat trick available to protect yourself That's right. from cards like Final Flare and Final Death. Yeah, this has really gone poorly now for Autumn Burchett, who is simply down to a Threnody Singer and the activation off of an Omen of the Sea in hand at this point. And they've passed the turn back. Now, from Glagowski's perspective, things look good. Glagowski still has six spells in hand because he missed a la his last land drop. And now he can kind of just start to move his way forward Little pump fake there from Glagowski, but he's not going to actually attack and pass the turn once again. And boy, Autumn needs to find some serious heat with this Oban of the Sea, or it could have very well fallen apart. And we may see Pyotr Glagowski pick up the first match here. If he's able to do so, it is such a huge step. I, I guarantee mm. tomorrow afternoon when we're, you know, working our way down whittling down the number of players, and you look back at these first few matches, you're going to go, wow, those were massive for the players that got the two wins in the draft. Yeah, absolutely. Now, this was a good draw here for Autumn. They found a Dreadful Apathy here that will lock down to Tectonic Giant. And I must say that Nyxborn Seaguard is just sized perfectly so far. <laughs> it's just holding the fort, right? I mean, you got, you got there's a Nyxborn Marauder. That can't attack. The Tectonic Giant, there's no good attack for that either. So, I mean, yeah. the only thing Piotr can do is just continue to just run out creatures from his hand. But again, he's up on resources, right? Look at his Very hand. Much. I mean, so much removal. He's yeah. got the Omen. He's got the Final Death. And, uh, and you know, just additional ways to kind of push through. Yeah, things I think still line up well for, for Piotr from a long-term perspective. One of the options he has is to attack with his creatures the one that gets blocked by the Sea Guard, he can finish off the Sea Guard with Omen of the Forge. Um, and it looks like he's going to spend a turn casting Final Death or Final Flare plus Omen of the Forge, something along those lines this turn. Yeah, it feels like a Final Death on the Nyx Nyxborn Sea Guard because yeah. that, that creature is really doing a great job of just preventing Pyotr from getting any attacks in. Interesting that he waited, right? He could have done that on his main phase. Ooh, hello, Ox of Agonis off the battlefield. So the rares are starting to show up now, and we're going to start seeing some attacks finally from Canister. Now, he's going to get this trigger again whenever the Tectonic Giant attacks as well, and this is a card advantage engine that he's going to be able to use. And look at this, he even hit two spells. Yeah. So he can pick between one or the other, Careless Celebrant or the more powerful Underworld Charger, and he has until his next turn, the end of his next turn to cast it. And, you know, this is a decent opportunity for Autumn to maybe get some favorable blocks here because of the Threnody Singer in their hand. And I imagine the priority is going to be to try to get that Tectonic Giant off the battlefield. Yeah, although, it has to be. Although, it, you know, it feels kind of fishy. I mean, I mean, Canister's got five cards in hand with five open mana. You have to think he's got something up his sleeve here. You know, Autumn can potentially run out the Singer here and triple block the Tectonic Giant. So here we go, double block on the Giant. Now that is four power total, so it's enough to kill the Giant. But the Threnody Singer is going to make the Giant an 0-4. And now Piotr has to make the decision. Does he yes. want to keep that Tectonic Giant in play? He could just play out an Omen of the Forge and just kind of throw it away, mm -hmm. right? He can go, I'm going to run out Omen of the Forge and then use Final Flare to kill the Naiad, get that off the battlefield to save my Tectonic Giant. I like that plan. Tectonic Giant, <laughs> rather. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, I mean, that's probably what it's going to do here. Yeah, because he can just go upstairs with it, just hit Autumn for two. Oh, what did I miss here? Oh, no, this is even better, right? Oh, because with it on the, the stack, on the this stack. is only going to give it minus two, minus zero. So the te Tectonic Giant will have one power, and this was a blowout. This was huge. Wow, nothing has gone right for Burchett. <laughs> Every single uh, interaction, whether their choice or not, has favored Pyotr Glagowski in this match. Yeah, and, and, and now Autumn has to run out the, the Dreadful Apathy here, here on the Tectonic Giant and uh, has wow. a Riptide Turtle. That was a Some sweet defense. play by Glagowski, by yeah, the way. Yeah, absolutely. That's the old, with the trigger on the stack, you know, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden everything falls apart for you. So here we go. Two attacks. Autumn's life total is going to start plummeting. And Tectonic Giant is going to trigger again. Again, this is basically just a card advantage engine 
that Canister can take advantage of going forward. He's just so far up on cards now, right? I mean, next turn, he's just going to be able to play both the Lamp Pad and the Underworld Charger and still have additional spells in hand and can refill with a card like Ox of Agonis. Here's Riptide Turtle to stem the bleeding, so no damage. And, you know, in Autumn's favor, they have been able to keep their life total at 21. Haven't, you know, gone below on life total much, but uh, that is going to start falling apart very quickly, particularly after Canister empties out his hand and then plays the Ox to reload. I just don't see any way out here for Burchett, and Burchett has now started drawing their low-end cards, right? A pair of Riptide Turtles. Not, th these are not the highlights of the deck. Right, I mean... Autumn's deck basically has like has one game plan. It's yes. muck up the ground with these turtles and uh, various defensive creatures and try to win with flyers plus staggering insight. And unfortunately, given how everything played out, they kind of lost that engine that they had going because of that Karametra's blessing that they used to protect their creature and attack through the Flemish Cyclops. That really was the critical moment. Yes. This this game fell apart. And it has not gotten better for Autumn Burchett. A rough one to kick things off. Piotr Glagowski looking like he's moving ever closer now to dominating this board state. Yeah, and, you know, Riptide Turtle doing a good job against these uh, three threes and four threes. But, but now Piotr can just run out two Death Touch creatures here. Meyer Triton and Venomous Hierophant. And the, and the Riptide Turtles cannot do anything against those creatures. And it's not getting better from there from Autumn's perspective, uh, especially with the planes off the top of the library there. Wagowski, if you take a look in the lower left part of your screen, you can see he's still very focused and perhaps even a little nervous. Uh, you know, th this is, again, the beginning of the biggest Magic tournament ever. Let's just call it what it is. And on top of that, this draft has huge implications for the long-term nature of this uh, form of this uh, tournament as well. I will say once sure you have this board state. Less maybe, nervous may, now? Maybe less nervous now. Feeling pretty good about uh, where, where things are going now. So is this a glimmer of hope now for Autumn? Threnody Singer does get to attack with Staggering Insight. Autumn has managed to keep their life total at 14, now going up to 16. Get some card draw going. Ah, it's another land off the I, top. I, I, th I think it's at this too point, late, right? it's just way too late. I mean, that was a good draw, and maybe if they were able to find another defensive card, but I think I think Canister just has has way too many cards on the battlefield, and it's just way too ahead on board here for for Autumn to come back. Canister's just going to cast Ox because yeah, you get the cards right away. It says discard your hand. The cool Oof. part is you may not have a hand to discard, in which case it just says draw three cards. Blood Aspirant. Another card to keep in mind here is Lampad of Death's Vigil. That is the type of card that can finish off an opponent who is at critical life total as well. Yeah, with the with the two blocks and the biggest creatures here, this is ten damage that goes through. And so, now now if if Canister simply just untaps. He can just kill Autumn That's just by right. sacrificing all of his creatures. Canister making sure that there's no Shatter of the Sky for Autumn Burchett, and there is not. So Autumn's going to get one last attack in with Threnody Singer, find another Plains, and I think that's going to be it yep. for our opening match here as Piotr Gwigowski has really beautifully navigated uh, the board and has put himself in a position to, uh, to win this turn. And, and just so you know, you know, at the last Mythic Championship, uh, Piotr Glagowski did not drop a match, and he's still running that streak up. He has now won nine straight matches. And there we go. That's the win for Piotr Glagowski. Defeats Autumn Burchett two games to zero. And I have to say, it was convincing. Uh, you know, Piotr played those, those games beautifully. We got a chance to see him lean on those rares where we actually got to see them come into play.